are back. We're here with Coach Arimas Babukas of Central Basket Madrid. Coach Arimas, or Coach Oli as most know him, continues to grow the game on a global scale. If you missed part one of our conversation, check out the link in the description. Coach Oli gave a background on his story and shared some real gems for all you young hoopers out there. If you are new here, do be sure to make yourself at home by clicking that big red button and subscribing to the channel. Finally, if you're a high school player, coach, or even a parent and want to know what it takes to get a college scholarship, do be sure to check out our ebook under the radar. It's in the description below. That's enough from me. Here is part two. Right. Going back to your early playing days, um, you know, for most coaches, as you mentioned, they still want to stay around the sport or, you know, they don't really have a choice. They couldn't make it as a player, some people. So would you say that from the early years, you showed signs of coaching while you were still a player? I think I did, like my previous coach said, but I didn't feel that way. Right. Like, I did not feel that way. I remember when I was 15, I think, I mean, I'm very old now, so, but, but I think when I was 15, 16, um, my coach told me, okay, in this team, you're not gonna play. You're gonna play, you know, uh, two minutes, five minutes in a game. Would you like to move on to the third team? So I'm playing for the first team. I said, okay, if you wanna play at 15, would you like to um, move on to the third team so you're gonna be able to play? And I say, no coach, I want to win. You know, because it was quite a successful team and he was the winning team. And I say to him, no, I'm playing basketball for winning because I'm not going to become a basketball player to live out of it. And I knew that at 15, 16. I mean, I just, I didn't want, I didn't want to say that to myself, but I knew it. And I said to the coach, no, I'm staying with this team. And because I want to win, no, I'm staying with that. And then the coach said, yes, but it's not going to be possible to play. And it's better for you, you know, which, which is, I think it's fair for coach to say. But I decided to stay and I said to coach, coach, if you keep in this team, I help you to coach. Without any intentions, I was not thinking I'm going to be a coach or, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I was not thinking about that. And the coach said, OK, you know, you can coach in this team and then move to the third team. And I believed in him, but he was a white lie. I moved to the other team and I was coaching. I was assistant coach at age of 16. Wow. You know, and my coach said, oh, I always knew you're going to be a coach. I don't know how true is that, but he always say this to me. I didn't want to, I didn't want to say that, but he was always saying that to me. You were going to be a better coach than the player. Could you tell us what teams you're currently coaching at that club, please? So Zentro Basket Madrid, it's the, quite a new club. It's going to the seventh year. It's quite new, I think, in the seventh year. We are the club and academy. So it's the difference, but it's the same. So we have the academy and we have the club. Uh, we have a teams in third division of Spain, which is called La Plata. We have a uh, first national team, which is I think the fifth there as well. We have U22 team and multiple teams, like um, and the, our top teams, which is on the 18, on the 16, on the 14, they play in the Premier division and then we have our second teams which is normally one year younger players playing in silver division so they have a gold silver and bronze so the first team playing in the gold um the second team playing in the silver and then if you have a third team in case with under teams for example they play in bronze as well so i work with um i do a lot of individual work during the week I'm um, doing the first year on the 16 team, on the 22 team, okay, two teams for, for this year. The last year I did on the 22 team, and then uh, second year under 16s, plus individual work, plus individual work. Um, the club have a lot of players from uh, different countries. They're normally in academies. You know, I think if I'm not gonna lie, we have 25 uh, junior players, which is players from Finland, players from Brazil, we have one English kid, by the way. Oh, wow. This year, we have a kid from Warwick. We have a kid from Warwick Thunder. Okay. Uh, he came for this year. We have a kid from Canada, nice. Luis. 
We have a Louis from uh, Warwick. We have a kid from Canada. We have a kid from Mexico. We have two kids from Japan. And there's some Spanish kids in the academy. Wow. No, it, it, I mean, I'm biased, but it, it, it's a really good, um, it's a really good academy and a club for the kids. You know, it's really good. They do basketball every day. Um, of course, foreign kids do the schooling. Right. Some of them online. Some of them in, in, in the school, but I think they do basketball every day. I mean, how it works is, is if you ask me differences, every kid have a SNC session, strength conditioning. So if you have four practice a week, you have four strength conditioning sessions as well on top of that. That's awesome. It's either before practice or after practice. I think that's missing. I mean, it's huge here. The strength conditioning is huge because naturally, the Spanish kids are not as athletic as, as let's say, or we guess, um, British kids are. Right. So they pay a lot of attention to strength conditioning. And it's been quite successful. I think we are top four team in Madrid. Wow. Top four in Madrid, there's a teams and we are in the mix. I mean, I remember we played this game, my first game in Spain. And I was excited, you know, and I come from the winning teams and I come with a winning programs and I was excited and you know and I was like come on guys and two of the players come to me half time and they say to me coach they are much better we have no chance but we're gonna try you know I was like oh what what do you mean you have no chance like what are you talking about I was like coach we watch all the basketball we understand that we can't beat him I was like hmm, should I agree with that or should I just be mad I was mad eh? I was mad but I was thinking Maybe they, but then in a way I understand the kids here understand basketball. They are not go mad if they lose to the better team. Mm. They they understand that okay, they was better on the day. They are not going mad. If they lose against the team that are not good, they mad. But if they lose against the team that better, they kind of understand why they lost. And I think watching basketball helps. I mean you watch ACB games, everybody watch Euroleague, you know, and it's quite accessible, quite cheap for them. I mean, everybody watch basketball. You go to the local restaurant or to the local pub or there's a basketball everywhere and they can watch it, especially the big games like national team playing, you know, when the local Madrid teams playing in EuroLeague or the Euro Cup or everybody knows the names of the basketball players. And for me, it was amazing. I remember I was, uh, we was watching this um, ACB game and, they, and the team was, Good team, of course, SCB team, but they was like in a bottle. And it's nothing to do with a local team in Madrid, they're far away. And they was telling me about these players, and I'm like, how do you know that? It's difficult to watch the, the basketball game. You know, it's the timing, is um, you know, Premier League is on. Um, kids struggle to watch BBL, especially in London, they struggle to watch BBL games. I know now it's easy a little bit with uh, with the YouTube and stuff, but I think in the culture wise, everybody here, and it's not the first sport, not even second sport. I would not I would say not even third sport in Spain. There's a sports ahead, but if you are a basketball player or you you playing basketball, you kind of involved in that culture. You talk basketball every day. Right? One of the questions we had was, do you have any advice for coaches looking to work internationally? What were the main difficulties you found? The first most difficult thing is the language. I think it's, 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 it's easier to coach in England because the English is common language and everybody knows. I think the if, if you have to rank me by top three most difficult things, I think the most difficult things is um, the language. You know, because everybody expects you to know the language and learn the language very quick. Um, second most difficult thing probably be away from home. Everybody thinks it's easy, but it's not really easy being away from family and, you know, the most of the time you live in the, the first time you're moving out of the country and without a family, you know, that's probably the second. And the third one is to, oh, probably the top two. I would give top two, probably away from home. It's very hard. Um, and the language, you know, the top two most difficult things. Um, what differences did you find between your Spanish teams and the English teams, the youth, in, in particular, the youth team. I know somebody gonna ask me that. Uh, just knew, I knew who was, I knew who asked that as well. Uh, uh, I don't know. There's, I mean, there is a lot. 
in it. it doesn't have to be Spanish teams or English teams. There's a big difference, you know. There's a big difference. Or not, not, not a big, but there's always a lot of difference. The teams I coach, um, I think in, in England we play fast. But in Spain, we play faster, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, the players in, in England, the teams I coach are faster than the current team, but we play in faster with the current team, if that makes sense. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, individually, the players are much faster in England. There is no doubt. Like, there is no question mark. But in, in Spain, we play faster with the slower players. Pace just because the style of the play. Right, right, right. That makes a lot of sense. Because, for example, or for example, the point guard would never bring the ball without pressure here in Spain. Never, mm. never. There's always going to be pressure, winning by 30 or losing by 30. In Spain, everybody pressure, no matter what the score. In England, as you know, sometimes no pressure. The players bringing the ball, looking. So that's the differences, I guess. But I mean, every team you coach have a difference. It doesn't matter the country, I suppose. What about technical ability? I know a lot of people think that the British kids are not technically sound. I kind of disagree with that. I think English kids is quite technically sound. It's just to apply these technical skills to the tactical abilities, you know, to apply in those technical uh, tactical skills, which is um, Spain is much, much advanced with that. Um, you know, technically English kids are not far away or even close. I know a lot of people disagree with that. Um, I really think that the technically English kids is not as bad. It's just applying those um, individual technical skills to the, the tactical ones, individual tactic or team tactic. It's to applying them, that's a big difference, not in terms of uh, technical ability. But lastly, in comparison to Lithuania, how would you how would you say your, your Spanish teams fare in terms of the comparison of level, uh, mentality, approach to the game? To the to, to my previous teams, yeah. Um, I don't really want to say that. But I'm gonna say it. Just because of you and you like the truth, I'm gonna say it. Here, understanding basketball is much higher level. I mean, the understanding of the game it's much greater. I mean, from under 14 teams and up, the players here invest more time to understanding basketball. You know because. As you know, a lot of people in the um, in the UK don't have a lot of chance. Coaches do, but uh, the kids don't have a chance to watch local teams, to watch uh, EuroLeague, Euro Cup, um, Basketball Champions League, uh, even the BBL team. Uh, they don't have a chance to watch it. They only watch um, the NBA games, which, as you know, sometimes before the playoffs, a way different type of game that we play in Europe or we able to play in Europe. So I think. And, and Spanish kids have that chance and they do a lot, you know, and, 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 and we are in the UK. We don't have this type of opportunities for the players. They don't watch local teams. I remember one time when I, I, I asked, um, name me the players of our Manchester Magic first team, man. Name me the players of NASA first team, um, very hard. And I did same in Spain here and everybody knows who's the playing for the first team. What's their name? What position they played, which is okay. I had an issue. Well, I had the situation when players didn't know their own team name. They don't watch the games because, for uh, whatever reason, they don't watch the first team games. When here, if they give an opportunity, kids wants to come and watch the games. More difficult now, but the kids come and watch your first team. You know, so understanding of the game, it's much much greater. It's much greater in uh, in Spain. If I can say that, yeah, hopefully nobody kill me for that, but <laughs> this is how I see. I can't, I can't guarantee that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that, 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 um, that wraps it up. I, I honestly appreciate you coming on today and sharing your, your wisdom and your experiences in the game. Um, I learned so much just in terms of the approach and the mentality and the key differences between uh, different age groups and nations when it comes to basketball. Um, and, you know, best of luck for the rest of the season. And hopefully when this is all over, uh, it won't be a Zoom call. 